Turn your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And I need you to get all of this on tape this morning. Even the initial statements that I make, if you would please, you guys at the sound booth. And so that all of this is part of it. Before we get to the scripture, I have a few things that I need to say. Because after all, this has been a crazy week in America. Now, America had already gone crazy. You understand that? This is just a result of that, and the craziness is not going to stop. Part of the problem is we've got a bunch of, of limp-wristed, lazy people who are afraid of sacrificing anything and won't stand up for right. But I, I want to make this statement. First of all, Madison Baptist Church is not an open forum of discussion and ideas. It is a church, an assembly of the Lord Jesus Christ, believers in Jesus Christ as their Savior, who accept the Bible to be true in every detail. Amen. This assembly meets to worship the God of the Bible and to hear His Word preached by a man of God as designated by the church. This assembly invites any and all who want to hear the truth of God expounded upon and explained. However, any disruption by any on the premises have their invitation immediately revoked. They will then be considered trespassers and will be treated as such. Now, in case there's any question, our bathrooms are only for those whose anatomy would match the word on the outside of the bathroom. Amen. If your anatomy doesn't match, don't you go into that room. You will be escorted off the premises completely. Right. Now, in America, we have to make an announcement like that. That shows how far we've come. Let's go to the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter, I've got a lot of scripture to give you this morning, but I'm just going to read one verse to get us started. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 14. It says, and this is the text, Doth not even nature itself teach you? Now don't misunderstand, I believe the Bible is the word of God. From the worst, first word of Genesis to the last word of Revelation, I believe it all. My life verse, as you know, is Psalm 119, 128. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. But God says in his word to the church at Corinth, he says, doth not even nature itself teach you? You know there are some things you don't need a Bible to know. There are some things that if you just got half a brain in your head and you can witness nature... You know certain things are so. The nature that God created. We don't talk about mother nature here. Nature is not female. It is not male. Nature is something that God created when he created the heavens and the earth. Now, well, we're going to look at some other scripture. I'll read some other scripture to you in a moment. And we have a number of things to say today, but let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus, and I beg you again this morning for the filling of the Holy Ghost of God, that as I preach, your word would go forth in power. Lord, as we open the scripture, and our people again are reminded of what you say in your word, may the Spirit of God do a work that we be grounded, that we not be blown about by every wind of doctrine, but we stand firm on the truths of the God of the Bible. And Lord, we will thank you for what you do in every heart, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me give you a few verses. You may not have time to turn to them, but you can write them down or simply get the recording. That'll be fine. Job chapter 12, verses 7 through 10. The Bible says, But ask now the beast, and they shall teach thee, and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee. Or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee, and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee. Who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this, in whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. There are certain things that God designed in nature to teach us some things. Even if you didn't have a Bible, these things would teach us if we'd pay attention. In Psalm 19, the Bible declares, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. For anybody who claims to be an atheist or an agnostic, you are saying, I don't believe what God said in nature. 
Do you get that? God speaks of Himself in nature, and the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. He goes on to say, Day unto day utter a speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His goings forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. You see, even creating the stars and the suns and the moon, he created that so even lost man knows that there's day and night, so that the lost man even knows that there are seasons to every year. God created that in nature, and they declare the glory of God. In Romans chapter, 19, or chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, "...because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen." being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You go over to the book of Romans for just a moment, Romans chapter 8, and just notice verse 22, what he says about creation. He says in verse 22, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travail in pain together until now. Now, Jesus often used nature to teach lessons in the Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew chapter 6, beginning in verse 21 on through verse 34, he tells us that the lilies of the field teach us that if God had clothed them, he'd take care of us. He teaches us about the sparrows, that if God takes care of the sparrows, he'll take care of us. There are lessons in nature that even Jesus used to teach us things. The reality is that you don't have to know the Bible to know some things are right and some things are wrong. What on earth has happened to where people can actually get on a TV or a radio and think somehow they are sounding intelligent to expound this stuff about the so-called transgendered or the same-sex marriage people or any of that and People are supposed to sit there and say, my, doesn't that sound intelligent? I think part of what has happened is Hollywood has given us such a world of make-believe with the computer-generated graphics that we no longer have any idea of what reality is. We have become like sheep. No, no, no. We have become like lemmings who simply hear somebody say some absolutely ridiculous, stupid nonsense. And automatically, because we don't want to be considered to be hard-nosed, we don't want to be considered to be judgmental. We sit there and say, maybe it's just so. We need to be open to everything. And the sad thing is, our populace has become so numbed and stupefied that they drink it up. Don't be deceived by these people. They know. These people that are pushing this stuff know that they are openly attacking Christianity the God of Christianity, the God of the Bible, and they are attacking His Word, and they know it. I'm talking about the leaders of this stuff. They know what they're doing. Don't be deceived. Trying to get away from the God of heaven and His laws. Since our law system in this country was based upon the Judeo-Christian ethic, our Constitution, the laws that sprang from that, now, that's not the case today, but that is the very foundation of this nation that made the nation what it is. And they show their hypocrisy over and over again. As the Bible says, professing themselves to be wise, they become as fools. And God warned us about people like that in Psalm 2. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Well, let's notice some things. First of all, nature teaches man the difference in the sexes. Do you realize that God used nature to teach Adam the difference in the sexes? Turn back to the book of Genesis. Turn back there with me to the book of Genesis, chapter 2. Of course, on the sixth day, God created all the animals. 
on the sixth day also, God created man. Now, we're going to begin reading in verse 18. God's already created man. Now, all the animals were created male and female, and, and Adam identified all of them as they passed before him. But God did that to teach him something, to teach him of a need that he had. If you look at verse 18 of chapter 2, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air. Now notice this. And brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, and that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found and help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Now I want you to notice that of all the species that God created, he created man by himself as a male. And then to teach him that he needed a female, he had all the animals be marched before him. He saw that he had a need, and God put him to sleep. He did not create another male. Following his nature, his creation, God created a female. Different from him. Had that not been so, none of us would even be here. There would be nobody on the planet, and it would have gone extinct a long time ago, which is why God describes this. Turn over to Romans chapter 1. The Bible's just so plain, folks. This nonsense that's going on in this nation today is an attack on the Bible and the God of the Bible. They don't like what God says in his word. Notice he says in Romans chapter 1, verse 26. He says, for this cause God gave them up in the vile affections, God's words. For even their women did change the, now underline this, the natural use to that which is, now underline this, against nature. Those are God's words. A fundamentalist didn't make this up. These are God's words. We read on. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman. I don't have to go into great explanation here. There's not a person here who doesn't understand what that's saying. Isn't that right? You know, I don't, you don't, we, we don't need a sex education class here. We're talking about natural use. In other words, what God intended in creation. Nobody is born this way. It's not natural. We move on. Burned in their lust, one toward another, men with men, working that which is, notice what God calls it, unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Now go on down to verse, oh, let's, well, verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things, and notice God's terminology, which are not convenient. In verse 29, he begins to give a list of all unrighteousness. Notice verse 31. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affections, implacable, unmerciful. Now he mentions in verse 29 and verse 30 things like murder and fornication. He mentions a number of other things as well. But part of all unrighteousness is doing that which is unnatural as God so ordained. Genesis 1, So God created man in his own image. And in the image of God created he him, look at this, male and female created he them. I'm simply saying to you today, from the word of God, nature teaches us 
that there's a difference between men and women. In the passage that we started out with, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 through 16, he makes it very plain that men and women were created differently. They were created for a different purpose. And even when they pray, that's what 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 through 16 is dealing with, that even when they pray, they are to look different from the neck up. Even when they pray, God expects that. When they're praying, they're not praying to men, they're praying to God. Even when they pray, they're to look right. A woman is to look like a woman, and a man is to look like a man. That's what it says. So he says, does not even nature itself teach you? If a man have long hair, it's a shame unto him. If a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. I didn't write that. I believe it. I believe it because God said it. And hopefully, if I didn't even know God said it, I'd believe it because nature says it as well. Listen to me, friend. You can go into a garage... And because you feel kind of, kind of revved up, right, for it on your head, start making car noises, it still doesn't make you a car. You say, man, I, I feel like a Corvette right now. It doesn't make you a Corvette. You're still a human. You get that? This nonsense. Well, I feel like we're asking four-year-old kids before their first day of school, are you male or female? What kind of nonsense is this? And now this thing about the transgendered bathrooms, it's what do you feel like today? If you feel like a female today, man, go into the female restroom. If you feel like a male, go into the male restroom. And if you feel like a cat, go to the litter box. <laughs> and see, you're laughing because it's so absolutely ridiculous. And these people are writing all these articles and saying all this nonsense on the news like somehow they're really intelligent and thinking people. They're idiots! See, they want to be considered normal while they're weird. Good night. If you're going to be weird, just say, hey, I'm weird. All right, you're weird. At least you're honest about it. I can take it when somebody's honest about it, but they want to be considered normal. Not in your life. By the way, getting same-sex marriages approved is not the end game. That is not the goal. That's just one step to the goal. To where we've got this stuff about the transgendered bathrooms. You know what I thought about doing today? I thought about Madison Baptist Church having a transgendered bathroom. I thought we'd get a porta potty and put it out there. <laughs> and we would put on the door, whatever. <laughs> but you understand now, we have to have trans species bathrooms. Because after all, how many have ever heard of Jason the horse? Raise your hand. Anybody here ever heard of Jason the horse? You people never listen to radio. One night, I was coming in late. I, was, I don't remember where I was preaching at, but driving late at night, I didn't want to fall asleep. So I'm going through the radio dial, just trying to find something that will keep you awake. And I'll tell you, if you want to listen to the fruits and the nuts of America, get on Coast to Coast Radio. And George Nury, I think it was him, maybe it was somebody taking his place that night, but they're interviewing Jason the horse. He's written, he's written a book. You can Google it. Just put in Google, Jason the horse. It'll come up. He is a horse trapped in a man's body. He began to realize he was really a horse years ago. And so he traveled over to England because he, he, he wasn't a Clydesdale, but he was some kind of Welsh horse. And he wanted to see his... his <laughs> He wanted to see where his ancestors came from. 
And he got there, and boy, he, he just carried on such wonderful conversations with the other horses. Well, now, if we've got to provide bathrooms for the, trans, for the transgender, then we're going to have to provide bathrooms for the trans species. Because we don't want that horse being embarrassed by going into the restrooms. So for people who feel like they're really a cat trapped in a man's body, we'll have litter boxes for them. And we're going to have to have pools for those who really feel that they're fish trapped in a man's body. And of course, what if they're an elephant trapped in a man's body? I just going to take a big bathroom. I'm sorry. And I'm trying to think, what would we do for a dog trapped in a man's body? You know, and you can tell if they're sick because they eat their own stuff. You know that, don't you? <laughs> but you know, when you take your dog for a walk in some cities, you've got to follow them around with a scooper or a bag to put everything in. So I guess what we'll have to do for them is just turn them loose out here in the field and give them a little scooper <laughs> so they can pick up after themselves. Because we don't want them to feel self-conscious about being a dog trapped in a man's body. You should preach it. Man, that's, that's gross. Exactly! At what point are you finally going to draw the line of some common sense? And so everybody's got to give in to the weird lest they be offended. Well, they've got no business being offended. I mean, we are so goofed up. Do you realize that of the four major presidential candidates, three of them think that's perfectly normal? I'm not voting for it. I'm not trusting an idiot that thinks that way with the chance to put the finger on the bomb for anybody. Couldn't believe it. One of the leading candidates came out yesterday and said, yeah, I think transgenders ought to be able to go to the bathroom wherever they want to go. David Cloud's website, wayoflife.org, he quoted from the CNS News article that uh, was entitled, PayPal, Apple, Coca-Cola Reject North Carolina Bathroom Law. Now, these guys wrote the truth. I, I, I want you to get this. I want you to pay attention to what you think. What you think. Although many large businesses, including PayPal, Apple, Microsoft, and Coca-Cola, Plus, Google, Levi Strauss, Barnes & Noble, Kellogg, Twitter, YouTube, Reddit, Starbucks, Facebook, and others have criticized North Carolina's new locker room and bathroom law as discriminatory to LGBT people. Those same corporations do business in Middle Eastern countries where, homosexuals, where homosexual conduct and cross-dressing are illegal. In Saudi Arabia, for instance, homosexual conduct is punishable by death or flogging. It's funny, none of these companies have said anything about them. You don't think they're scared of Muslims, do you? But see, if this was really a conviction for them... Wouldn't they be consistent and talk about Saudi Arabia? Here, they're not going to have anything to do with North Carolina while they continue to take money out of Saudi Arabia. It is all about the bucks, you understand that. By the way, according to the U.S. State Department in Kuwait, practicing homosexuals can face prison terms up to 10 years. Cross-dressers can go to prison for up to three years. PayPal, Apple, Microsoft, Coca-Cola do business in both Saudi Arabia and Kuwait, despite the anti-gay laws in those countries. Neither PayPal, Apple, Microsoft, nor Coca-Cola would tell CNSNews.com if they oppose those laws, whether they would publicly ask that those laws be repealed, whether it is hypocritical for them to oppose the North Carolina law while doing business with Saudi Arabia and Kuwait, and why, since they are committed to LGBT rights, they conduct business in countries where homosexual acts and cross-dressing are illegal. That's a question they ought to have to answer. If they're going to get upset with the people over in North Carolina, 
They're not putting homosexuals in jail over there. They're not doing anything to cross-dressers over there. But they're going to pull all their money out. They're going to pull their conventions out of there with just the simple law that respects decency. When was the last time you heard of a Muslim bakery being sued for not doing a homosexual wedding cake? Well, don't hold your breath because there's not going to be one. They don't do it. And I think that you could scream all you want. They're not caving. Not like a lot of Christians are caving today. The professing Christian world has caved today. Because even the professing Christian world has no respect for the one they claim to be their God and for the Bible that he gave and for the nature that he created, all of it. And it continues to be nothing but wickedness. Nature teaches us the difference between men and women. Oh, but hey... Even in our churches, they dress the same. Now, they don't in Madison Baptist Church. But it's amazing how many Christians... Truth is, don't get upset with me now. I've still got in my office, I have got in my office a picture. You remember when Oprah lost her 110 pounds or something like that? How many remember that? She had that big weight loss. She appeared on Phil Comeyou, uh, Donahue... And the next day, there was front page of the U- USA Today. I've got it in my office. USA Today, front page. And they asked the question, when is enough enough? And on that front page, you have a picture of Oprah in her tight blue jean pants and Phil in a skirt. USA got it. Church people are too dumb to get it. Wait, we're different. The God of heaven created us different. We are to look. Oh, but preacher, don't you know that God looks on the heart? Man looks on the outward appearance? I got news for you. My grandchildren look on the outward appearance too. Do you know that? By the way, that verse, man looks on the, our man looks on the outward appearance, God looks on the heart, has to do with when God picked David to be king over his seven brethren who looked much stronger. Don't think God's blind. And by the way, since men cannot see your heart, you're to dress in such a way that it shows what's on your heart. And by the way, you do. When people come in with a gangland outfit and their pants down below their rear end and they're walking along like that, they're showing exactly what's on their heart. What you wear tells us what's on your heart. I didn't even have that down. That was free today. That was extra. We won't even take up an extra offering for those last three minutes. So nature teaches us the difference between men and women. Let me tell you what else nature teaches us. Nature teaches us teaches us the penalty of sin. say, what do you mean? Well, nature dies. Matter of fact, you go all the way back to the fall of mankind. Turn back to Genesis chapter 3. In Genesis chapter 3, after the fall of man, after sin, you see, man's sin affected nature. He says in verse 17, let's see. He says, and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow, notice, cursed is the what? Ground for thy sake. Wow. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Thou shalt return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. You see, all of that's because of the fall. The reason roses have thorns is because of the fall. The reason trees die, grass dies, everything dies, is because of the fall. 
Now, if you don't think that affects us today, remember I preached a message last year after the horrible ruling by the Supreme Court that legalized same-sex marriage. After that, not just unchristian ruling, but unconstitutional ruling by people who should have been smart enough to know better. After that terrible wickedness that was perpetrated on what at one time the Supreme Court had called a Christian country back in the early part of the 1900s. We hear this stuff about man-made climate change. Well, it's not the factories that are changing the climate, and it's not the cars that are changing the climate, but I would agree with them about man-made climate change from this point in Scripture. Turn over to Leviticus chapter 18. Leviticus chapter 18. The Word of God makes this very, very plain. There's no way to get around this. God warned Israel about this, how their lifestyle could change the climate in the promised land. Notice what he says. Chapter 18, beginning at verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind, it is abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto, it is confusion. Defile not ye yourselves. If any of these things... For in all of these the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. And the, now notice, and the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, shall not commit any of these abominations, neither shall any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled, that the land spew not you out also, when ye defile it, as it is spewed out, uh, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. Now, he also goes on to say a little bit more about that. I wonder why. Do you think maybe it's fracking that's causing all these gigantic earthquakes around the world? Why all the tectonic plates are having trouble right now? Or could it be the sin of mankind and the earth is about ready to throw up? See, God's already spoken on this. But we're too dumb... In spite of all God said, all that he has said that has come true in the word of God, and the rest will come true too, we don't think that the God of love means it. Well, he was a God of love back when he said it. He's still a God of love today. He looks down on sinful mankind and offers us salvation. That's amazing. But I want to remind you, turn back a few pages to Genesis chapter 6. What God did because of man's sin before. In Genesis chapter 6. You have the beginning story of Noah. And notice what he says, first of all, in verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You might write out beside that, Internet. Verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping things, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Without verse 8, none of us would be alive today, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But then go down to verse 11. This is God speaking. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God judged it. I'll not take time to read the passage in Isaiah 24, verses 4 through 6. But you see, nature itself teaches us of the effect of sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. The Bible says, wherefore is by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Death is in the world because of the sin of mankind. Nature teaches us that now the book teaches us that too don't misunderstand but you see we have the testimony of god himself in his word we have the testimony of nature therefore it also shows us our need for salvation when jesus came 
That verse, Romans 6, 23, for the wage of sin is death, it says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Do you realize when Jesus died on the cross, he did not die for the animals. He did not die for the plants. He died for man. And that this creation, which has been cursed by the, by the sin of mankind, that this creation, God himself is going to destroy. All of it. Just turn with me. Go over to 2 Peter chapter 3. You need to turn fast so I can get done. 2 Peter chapter 3. Notice beginning in verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. The elements shall melt with a fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? God's going to destroy all of creation. But the God of love beforehand reaches out to mankind... For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Now, contrary to what people want to make you out to be a, a homophobe. No, I'm not. We love homosexuals. We want to see them get born again. Amen. They die as they are. They'll burn in hell forever. By the way, we love adulterers too. But if they die as they are, they'll burn in hell forever. Right. They've got to be born again just like the homosexual. You see, sin is sin no matter who does it. And the Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Jesus died for us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. And yet for adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He took our place on the cross. He took the, he took the place for murderers. So that murderers could go to heaven. So that thieves could go to heaven. So that drunkards could go to heaven. I mean, he died for sinful mankind. The Bible says, And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. But if a homosexual or sodomite, Bible term, comes to God, or abuser of themselves of mankind, or those that do that which is against nature, when they come to Jesus, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. He changes them when they get born again. That's the testimony of the Word of God. not going to turn there because of time, but Revelation chapter 21, verses 4 through 8 tells us also about the destruction of this world. God's going to have a new heaven and a new earth for us. As vile and vulgar as mankind is, as he continues to strike out at the very God of creation, the God of the Bible, and deny his work, the Bible says in 2 Peter 3, 5, for this they willingly are ignorant of. They do not, they cannot stand the thought that they're going to have to stand before a God who is absolutely holy. The Bible says, as it is appointed unto man once to die after this judgment. So how much better if they come to Jesus now, receive his salvation and forgiveness for their sins, be made new creatures, and spend an eternity with God in heaven. But you can only do that by coming to the Jesus of this book. No other way to get to heaven. The Bible says this. Acts chapter 17 and verse 30. In the times of this ignorance God winked at. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. I'm going to wrap this up with one more verse. I want you to turn over to Matthew chapter 5. You say, preacher, how in the world could this stuff happen here? How could we have gotten so debased? How could we be surrounded by so much debauchery and absolute wickedness when even for people who don't have the Bible, they've got the nature that God created to tell us that these things are wrong? How can these things be going on? And I believe the answer was given on the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13. 
Jesus said, now he's talking to believers here. If you're not a believer, this isn't you. But if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, ye are the salt of the earth. Now, that's very good. But salt has certain properties. You ever had salt that wasn't salty? <laughs> they, remember that, that product they had out? Um, I can't believe it's not butter. I took a taste of it and I could believe it. <laughs> salt is not salt. Man, I, I can believe it. But notice he says, But if the salt has lost its savor... Wherewith shall it be salted? Now notice, we're the salt of the earth. Look what he says next. It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out, now look at it, and to be trodden under the foot of men. When the church becomes so spineless, when the church becomes so unmasculine that it can't stand against sin any longer, it is good for nothing and will be trodden under the foot of men. You're not done with states, whole states being boycotted. Well, I got news for you. I'm not shopping Target. I mean, they want any old pervert to go in to the bathroom and my wives, are do- my w- wives, <laughs> my wife or daughters are going to be there. Oh, buddy. <laughs> oh, no way do I want them there. The thing is, these corporations are proud of the stance they're taking. And if it means I don't get to vote for one person for president because they don't have a brain in their head, that they think this stuff doesn't matter, then bless God, I'll just not vote for any of them. God's people need to take a stand. Ephesians chapter 5 says that we are to reprove the unfruitful works of darkness. You don't sit back and be silent about it, but be a people that take a stand for that which is right. Even nature itself teaches us. Let's pray. Father, we come to you now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I beg you, dear God, to deal with hearts. Lord, perhaps there's someone... Someone here today, they're lost. They're on their way to hell. And perhaps they would identify themselves in one of these groups that were mentioned today. Please help them to understand that Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sin and he wants to save them. He doesn't want them to die and go to hell. If they'll come to Christ, they can have salvation just like an adulterer or fornicator can come to Christ and have salvation. Just like a drunkard can come to Christ and receive salvation. Just like a thief can come to Christ and receive salvation. We pray they would. Lord, I pray for Christians today. We sit back, not wanting anybody to think that we're judgmental, not willing to call evil what God calls evil, not even willing to speak up for the nature that God created. God, give Christians some backbone today. Or they'll find they'll have no place to even live in this nation. Lord, please move upon us today. Have your will in every life. I beg it in Jesus' name. With heads bowed and eyes closed.